Hi, scholars. Happy Wednesday. Um, I just wanted to put a picture of my favorite fruit on the screen because in quarantine and while school has been shut down, I've been eating lots of this fruit. So after you're done watching this video, comment down below your name and your favorite fruit. Let's get started today on our math lesson. Today we are going to look at module six, lesson nine. I have mine pulled up right here. Sorry. Okay. Nice job on all your hard work yesterday. I was really impressed with everything that you did. And I can't wait to see you all logging more minutes on Zern. Let's do it. So we are going to start by reading this problem right here. It says, give me one second here. Let's read together. Gabriella had 11 lizards. Abigail gave some lizards to Gabriella. This is supposed to say Gabriella. I'm just going to write the letter G for Gabriella. Gabriella now has 23 lizards. How many lizards did Abigail give Gabriella? So we are trying to find how many lizards. Abigail gave to Gabriella. On your page, on your packet on module six, lesson nine, go ahead and pause your video and solve this problem now. Nice job. Let's look at it together. So the question says, how many lizards did Abigail give Gabriella? Read the problem. I'm going to make sure I circle the important numbers. So we know that Gabriella started with 11. Then Abigail gave her some number of lizards and she ended with 23 lizards. So we need to find that some number that Abigail, that number of lizards that Abigail gave to Gabriella. So I'm going to set up my tape diagram. I'm going to draw um, a box for the part that we know and the other part. And we can't forget the two lines at the top. So make sure your tape diagram is set up looking like this. Now let's draw, or let's fill in what we know. So we know that Gabriella had 11. So we know that one part is 11. We're gonna label this G for Gabriella. Then Gabriella got some number of lizards, some more lizards, and then she had a total of 23. Now our job is to find that missing box. How can we use a number sentence to find the missing part? Should we use an addition or subtraction number sentence? Shout it out on two, one, two. That's right, we can use both. We can use addition or subtraction. I'm going to set up both number sentences so you can see them and you can choose how you want to solve. So if we're going to use subtraction, we need to start with the total, which is 23. Take away the part that we know, which was 11, and then we'll solve. And if we're going to use addition, we know that we started with a part of 11. We added some more. And then we got to the total of 23. If you haven't already, go ahead and pause and solve both of these number sentences. If you already did that, let's solve them together. To solve the subtraction one, I'm going to grab 23 and count down 11 times. Let's do it together. We got to be really careful on this one so that we don't get tricked, okay? Grab 23, say 23, 23, 22, 21, 20. 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. Great, now we've counted down 11 times and we were left with the number 12. If you counted up, you would also find that you would have to count up 12 times from 11 to get to 23. That means that our missing part was 12 and I'm gonna label it A for Abigail, and Abigail gave 12 lizards to Gabriella. Nice job, ladies, showing some teamwork. 
let's move on to the next page. Okay, right now, the only problem you should be looking at is this one right here. This is the first place we're gonna start right here. On your page, pause and solve four plus three. Write the answer right here in this blank. Nice job. Now, since you're a super smart first grader and we've been learning about addition and subtraction all year, I'm sure it took you no time to solve that. Four plus three is, that's right, four plus three is seven. So go ahead and fill it in there. I'm gonna use a drawing to help me solve this problem. I'm gonna draw four ones underneath my four. One, two, three, four, and then three ones. One, two, three. Now let's count all those ones to make sure we got the right answer. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Great, that's what we got up top too. Nice job. Now let's solve, now let's fill in our number bond right here. So our total is seven. Oops. Our total is seven, and our two parts were four and three. Nice job. Now we're going to solve using tens instead of ones. So this problem right here says four tens plus three tens. Let's use a drawing to help us out again. So I'm gonna draw four tens underneath where it says four tens. My pencil is moving, so is yours. One, two, three, four. Now draw three tens. One, two, three. Great, now let's count the total number of tens we have. We have, oh no, okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tens. So I'm going to write seven tens. This number sentence is written using the say 10 way. This number sentence is written using the say 10 way. How is this number sentence written? That's right, it's written using the say 10 way. The say 10 way happens when we say the words four tens plus three tens equals seven tens. Now, Let's fill out our number bond over here. So we have the parts of four tens and you should also be filling out your number bond right now too. We have three tens on this side and that gives us a total of seven tenths. Good. Now we're going to solve using numbers. So up here we solved this number sentence using the say 10 way. Now we're going to take this number sentence and this number bond and turn it into numbers. So I need to find what number is equal to four tenths. Let's count by tens four times to find out. 10, 20, 30, 40. Four tens is equal to 40. On your page, write 40, then write what number is equal to three tens. Go ahead and pause and fill out the rest of this number sentence. Write what number is equal to three tens, then write the total. Nice job, you did it on your own. Now let's make sure we got the same answer. Three tens is equal to 30. Nice work if you got 30. And just like up above, seven tens is equal to 70. Let's fill in our um, number bond. So in our number bond, we had a part of 40 and 30, and that gave us 70. 
the numbers on these two problems stay the same. The only thing that changed is the units that we're using. So over here, we're using tens. We're using the word tens. But down here, we're using the number 40. And that's the same thing as the first problem that we solved when we were looking at four plus three. It's really the same thing as when you add the tens in, four tens plus three tens. So now we can see that we can add these numbers in a few different ways. Four plus three is seven, but if we turn it into tens, four tens plus three tens is equal to seven tens, which is also the same thing as 40 plus 30 equals 70. Let's try another example together. I'm gonna to scroll down on my page. So down here we have three plus six. Go ahead and solve three plus six on your page now. Nice job, three plus six, you should have gotten nine. Now we need to figure out what is three tens plus six tens. I know that three plus six is nine, so three tens plus six tens must equal nine tens. Make sure you have this on your page. Now let's turn the say 10 way right here into numbers. So we need to find out what is three tens, what number is equal to three tens? Three tens is equal to 30. What number is equal to six tens? Six tens is equal to 60. And I know that three plus six is nine, so 30 plus 60 must equal 90. And go ahead and fill out your number bond right there using this number sentence. Go ahead and pause and do that now. Nice job. Let's double check our work. So we have 90 as our total, and we had one part of 30 and one part of 60. Your number bond should look like this. Let's try another example down below. For this problem right here, seven minus four, you're gonna pause and solve the whole thing on your own. Using, um, first using ones, then using the say 10 way, then turning the say 10 way into numbers. You're also gonna fill out your number bond. Go ahead and pause and solve this on your own. Nice job, now that you've solved on your own, I also solved on my own. Let's double check our answers together. So first we know that seven minus four is equal to three. Give me a thumbs up if you got that. Nice job. Now let's use um, take that and turn it into the say 10 way. So we have seven tens minus four tens is equal to three tens. This number sentence up here helps us solve these two number sentences down here. Let's turn the say 10 way into numbers. Seven tens is equal to 70 minus four tens is equal to 40. Three tens is equal to 30. 70 minus 40 equals 30. Now don't get tricked on your number bond. Remember that the total in a subtraction number sentence comes first. So I wrote the total 70 up here and the two parts 40 and 30 down here. Nice job if you got all of that work correct. Let's move on to the next page. All right, now we're looking at this problem right here. We have a drawing, a number bond, and some number sentences we're gonna fill out. First, let's check out the drawing. Let's check the total number of 10 sticks we started with. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 10 sticks. Keep that in your mind. Now it shows in our picture that we crossed off one, two, three, 10 sticks. If we have seven tens, seven tens, and we cross off three of them, how many are left? Let's count. We have one, two, 
three, four, ten sticks left. Now let's use that information, keep all that info in your brain, and let's go over to the say ten number sentence. That's right, the say ten number sentence is right here. So how many total number of ten sticks did we start with? We started with, that's right, we started with seven. And we crossed out or took away or subtracted one, two, three, tens. So we're gonna write that. And we were left with one, two, three, four tens. So write four tens. Nice job. Now on your page, pause and turn this say 10 way into numbers. Nice job. Let's do that together now. Seven tens is equal to 70 minus three tens is equal to 30. And that equals four tens, which is equal to 40. Nice job. Now let's take this information and put it in a number bond. We start with the total, which is 70 in a subtraction sentence. And our two parts are 30 and 40. Nice job, scholars. Let's look at this next one down below together. So down here, we're doing almost the same thing as we were up here. This time, we're using dimes. Think back all the way to when we were in school, and remember how much is a dime worth? If you remember how much a dime is worth, shout it out. A dime is worth? That's right. A dime is worth 10 cents. A dime is worth? Give yourself a pat on the back if you remember that. A dime is worth 10 cents. So we're doing something similar that we did up here. This time we're going to do it with dimes. Let's count how many dimes we started with. We have one, two, three, four, five, six dimes total. Now let's see how many dimes were taken away or subtracted. One, two, three, four. So we started with six dimes minus four dimes, and we were left with one, two dimes right there. So you're going to write two dimes. This is similar to the same say 10 way, but we're just using dimes instead of tens. Now let's turn this number sentence using the dimes into numbers. If you know how, pause and do it on your own and fill in your number bond. Let's do it together. Six dimes is equal to, hmm, let's think. If one dime is worth 10, that means six dimes is equal to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. 60. 60. How much is four dimes equal to? Four dimes is equal to 10, 20, 30, 40. Sorry, 40. And two dimes is equal to 20. Go ahead and fill in your number bond on your page now. Nice job. You should have a total of 60 and two parts of 40 and 20. Nice job for all your hard work on those scholars. Let's go down on this page. So for the next two examples, you are going to pause and solve these two on your own. When you are done, go ahead and play, and I will go over the answers with you. All right, scholars, let's check our work. So on this problem, we started with one, two, three, four, five, six dimes, and we added one, two dimes. That gave us a total of eight dimes, and if we know that six dimes plus two dimes is equal to eight dimes, it makes it really easy for us to turn that into numbers. Six dimes is equal to 60, two dimes is equal to 20, and eight dimes is equal to 80. So 60 plus 20 equals 80. Nice job. Let's do the next one. Over here, we started with a total of nine dimes. Two of them were crossed out, and we were left with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dimes. 
if we know that nine minus two is equal to seven, it makes it really easy for us to turn that into tens using 90 minus 20 equals 70. Nice job, scholars, for all your hard work on this lesson. You have got this. The next page is your independent practice. Keep up all your hard work and keep logging on to Zern and get those minutes up. Bye, scholars.